Matt here with the Spice of Life Grafted Branch Homestead. So today uh, we have let our eggs all sit and rest for 24 hours and we're going to be putting these guys in the incubator. So this is day zero um, on incubation. We want to go 14 days before lockdown but today is day zero. So I'm going to use my quick little handy hail, uh, quail hatching guide here. Um, these are the my shire eggs that I'm starting with. So this is my shire flock. I got 60 of them in. Um, one broke when I was taking them out to set and then I, I actually also lost another one unfortunately while I was bringing them out here when it uh, puffed off um, and cracked. So we, we're down two but we're going to go ahead and get these set in here. Alright, so these are the Myshire farm eggs, beautiful little quail eggs. These are the two that uh, cracked. You don't want to put any cracked ones in the incubator because they can breed different bacteria in there. So uh, we got that marked, um, it is about 4 o'clock, and so day zero, date and time, um, we're going to be putting 58 eggs in the incubator, um, incubator tray numbers, uh, and so now that is, well, you can see it. what I've done, because I'm running several different groups of eggs, is I've numbered each uh, tray, and each tray holds 20 eggs. I don't want to put them right here in the end next to the motor because it's the hottest. So I, since I have two broken My Shire Farm eggs, um, My Shire Farms is going to get rows four, five, and six. There we go. So I got my sheet here, um, incubator tray rows four, five, and six are for this flock. And so that's going to start day zero. So we'll get the eggs in. Yeah, start incubation now. It's been three, uh, sorry, been 24 hours since we received the Myshire eggs, about 21 hours since we got the Southwest Game Bird eggs. Um, so 12, 24 hours sitting, resting, pointed side down, got that done. This temperature gauge is reading right at 99.5. This one is always low, I'm not sure. And uh, these two I don't think work very well. They're just really cheap ones. But I'm using them more for the hygrometers, so I got it between 40 and 50. That is perfect. We can check little thermometers inside here, just below 100. That one says 100, and that one says 100. You can't really see it, but it looks like we are all set up. Now, um, with putting the eggs in the incubator, you want to keep the incubator closed as much as possible. So I want to make sure I get myself uh, a little work area all set up here and ready to go. That is the lockdown box and the brood, one of the brooder boxes, half of it that I am uh, starting. Okay, cool. So we've got our incubators ready, paperwork's filled out, we've got our beautiful eggs sitting here. I'm going to put them in as quickly as possible so as to keep this door closed as much as possible. Um, that way the water bottles and whatnot that help stabilize the heat retain heat. Um, while I'm doing it though, I am going to double check again just really quickly to make sure that nothing has cracks. Alright, so we'll go as quick as possible here. I guess some people candle the eggs at this time to check for viability. Uh, from what I understand, from what Zach says uh, over at My Shire Farms, is it's not really necessary or needed. Just make sure they don't have cracks, really. Um, if you haven't checked out My Shire Farms while well, I'm putting these eggs in, uh, check them out. So not only do they sell quail eggs and lots of other things, they run an 18 and under contest every month where they give away quail eggs. A, ha a hutch, an incubator, the whole deal, I mean the whole gauntlet to get young kids going, um, you know, on, on things like this, on the right path and not wrong paths. Uh, he puts a lot of time and effort into that, um, and, and as well as I believe he fights for the, the right things that we need to fight for right now and stand up for in this nation. So my Shire Farms YouTube channel, he also devotes so much time and care into helping people. You can tell it's truly his passion um, if they have questions or anything to get it done. So these eggs I had uh, gotten in a giveaway from him and just been hooked on his videos. Every Sunday you can check those out and uh, they do questions, I believe Sunday, Saturdays, Mondays. They have different ones for new quail owners or quail for profit. They do quail for profit. 
Um, amazing guy, an amazing family. Um, so while I'm, I'm working with his eggs and putting them in here, I just wanted to give a shout out to Zach there. Thank you, Zach, for these eggs. Um, but more so, thank you for the person you are, or seem to be here at least. Probably some jumbos in here. Um, some others that are quaternix quail. Ooh, those egg turners really turn. So I think that's another cool. So none of these are celadon. Some of them look a little blue but from what I understand celadon's just a gene a recessive gene or, or whatnot in the eggs that turn them blue um, that's something I'd like to get sometime just for our family and whatnot but right now we're doing these quail for sustainability to learn about butchering and raising our own food um, as well as you know to develop these skills and familiarize ourselves uh, my goal is I'd like to be able to produce meat uh, birds for meat for one meal a week for our family, so that'd be about 32 meat birds a month. I would need to um, be growing and, and butchering for that. Um, I'd like us to have enough eggs to be eating as, as much as we'd like. We do have the chickens as well, so these I will use for eating probably in the chickens more for baking and things like that. We'll see, but I want to provide that as well, so I want to keep a hutch of about 30 uh, 20 to 30 egg layers as well and then of course um, I'd like to be selling these eggs for other people to start the same journey on sustainability um, if you need pet food for you know reptiles or things like that um, or just to eat the eggs yourself and the meat yourself I'll be looking to be selling in, in a few months here possibly if I can do that I'll need to look into that but the main reason we're doing this is for self-sufficiency for our family. Now I know right now YouTube and Facebook don't like that word self-sufficiency. Don't like us pushing self-sufficiency. So if you've been asking yourself what that little counter is in the bottom on this incubation video, uh, that little counter is for how many times I say self-sufficiency. I think it is so extremely important to make yourself more self-sufficient and the fact that Facebook and YouTube and these uh, different people and different sites are trying to push against that is absolutely ridiculous. Do as much as you can to become more self-sufficient. Alright, so we got all the Myshire eggs in here. I'm going to go ahead and shut this. Keep this shut as best as possible. I'm going to pause the camera and we will be back with the Southwest Game Bird eggs. Alright, so what we got here is 120 jumbo quail eggs from Southwest Game Bird. Now, um, these are the jumbo brown and the jumbo white. Once my brain kicked in, I remembered what those were. Um, so they're two different ones that we are going to be breeding. So these are the JMF line uh, quail, so I, I do want to keep them separate. I want 120 eggs. I'm only going to be able to put 60 in the egg turner. And with our brooders and space that I have right now, until I grow to the size I'd like to, um, that's just going to be as many as we can do right now. So I'm going to do half of the jumbo brown, um, half of the jumbo browns, half of the jumbo whites um, in here, and then the remaining 60 eggs are going to go to a buddy to hopefully start his journey. All right, so let's go ahead and fill out the paperwork real quick and talk about these a little bit. So it, it gets its own page here, and these are the game bird flock. That's what I named it. Got 120 eggs in from Southwest Game Birds, the jumbo salt and pepper production mix. Uh, note, we had none cracked, none have fallen, or, or that I've seen cracked yet, so we'll leave that. They have been sitting here for about 22 hours, uh, roughly. So now we are on day zero in incubation time, and so I'm going to go ahead and put down, it's about, yeah, it's about four o'clock today. Um, 
Number of eggs in this group is 60 because we're only going to be putting 60 in. Incubator trays, we're using tray one, two, and three. Um, and cool. So we're going to get these going. All right, cool. So we'll open up this quick. I'm going to inspect and uh, put in half and half on each of these. And I guess we'll do a little talk as far as what I know about Southwest Game Birds as well, um, since we did the Marshire. So I don't know a whole lot, as much about them um, as I do my shire. They don't really focus on YouTube videos from what I understand. Um, I won 100, I got a giveaway for 120 of these eggs um, from watching a live feed and, and uh, um, being part of a live feed over on Terry's Cortinix Corner. Um, that's actually the guy who uh, I got the basic build for this incubator besides my few modifications. If you haven't checked him out, go check him out. He likes to build things and has um, a whole lot of knowledge on quail um, as well as he has lots of guests on his show. That's valuable. Um, if you need to know how to build an incubator, watch my video. <laughs> we watch his video too. He, he's the one that I got the idea from. Um, for this and so these came from Michael over at Southwest Game Birds and um, I like them from his story uh, they were really small just a couple of years ago um, and he didn't like his job as he said so he quit and started raising quail they put their money into buying a farm and now they're Southwest Game Birds and uh, run the JMF line so JMF, uh, I can't tell you off the top of my head the guy's name, what it stands for, but it's a, it's a pure line in these eggs. Um, and so what I'm excited about is I'm going to have this JMF line of whites and browns, and then I'm also going to have um, my Myshire. So I'll have a couple different groups of quail from, you know, essentially different ends of the country. And so if I want to... Um, uh, get some diversity in my flock that shouldn't be a problem and so that kind of excites me now these jumbo eggs man some of these are just huge look at that and they're having a little bit hard time fitting in these little quail egg trays um, I don't think they'll be a problem but I'm a little bit worried about my my lockdown box um, so in the next video after this one will be on my lockdown box build for the final few days of incubation and I have one box with two sides to put all these eggs in and uh, it's a pretty good size, actually. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. I don't want to leave the store open. Um, all right, so we got about half of these eggs in here. And then I'm going to do half on the jumbo brown. And I'm going to mark on my paper which trays are the brown and the whites as well, just for my own knowledge. Man, some of these jumbo eggs are just huge. That, those will be my good eating ones, and then I guess meat ones as well. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to raise both jumbo and just the regular Quaternix. Um, I, I eventually want to get into, you know, getting some different types of ones, Italians or Pharaohs, or all these new things I'm learning about. Learn to breeding for sex links so I can identify them right away. Ones that are better, of course, as I do with our garden and all of our plants. I want to breed everything and grow everything we have here, um, specifically to being good for the southwest. Now in the southwest desert here, the high, high desert here, uh, most people think it is hot all the time. It does get hot, very hot in the hot months, but it gets cold, very cold in the cold months. This room we're in here is, uh, it was actually a converted garage, it's our den, and so it, it gets cold in here. I had to fire up the um, heater in here today because I want to make sure that this chamber isn't having to work so hard it did look like it was dropping down at night a little bit. I'm really crossing my fingers with this chamber. Um, I, uh, I don't know if I'm just more nervous about it than I should be or not but um, we'll see. Hopefully everything goes well. All right so we'll take a quick shot. We got all uh, 120 eggs in there. We have our 60 here to I'll pack up for a for my friend here and we'll get going. So let's get this door shut so that way it can come to temp and I'll, and I'll be back with little updates every day as this goes on. All right, so I'm going to put my little hanging one there. Got my thermometer just right. Water levels are should be good. Let's get this shut up. 
I'm also going to run some tape along all the seams um, around the door to help with its insulation. I'm going to cut a better window out, but right now I have this little window and then I'm just draping a towel in front of it. And so I'll, uh, we'll watch the temperatures come up and humidity come up and get back to you every day. So thanks for watching. Um, as always, give me a thumbs up. It really helps add a comment. Um, helps me out a ton. And if, if you're not subscribed, go and subscribe. Turn that bell to all as you get videos that come out sporadically so you'll get them all. Um, appreciate everyone watching and I hope this helps out. I hope you can help uh, your journey to self-sufficiency and getting your, yourself or your family and loved ones in a better spot where we're not so reliant on everything going on but can be slightly more self-sufficient. Thanks for joining me. I have kind of covered this up a little bit. I have one of my holes taped, one of them open. It looks like it's evening out. That one's reading 100, this one's reading uh, 99.6, and then this back one's just always been off and funky. I think it's just wrong. Um, but anyways, it's there. And the ones inside are both reading at about 100 degrees, so it looks like it is doing all right and stabilizing. When I first had it running, the first few minutes after I started filming, um, for like a minute maybe half a minute it jumped up to 108 so i'm really hoping that's not a problem it was really only about 30 seconds maybe and i opened the door and uh turned the light off and i'm not sure why it did that um but uh it was just for a few seconds so maybe it was just a thermometer reading weird um i hope everything's all right but so now it is going looks like it's stabilizing